Okay, this is a video on cell division, section 8.2 of our textbook. We'll look at some of the uh, points of the empty outline. First point is to look at the two parts of the cell that are equally divided during cell division in eukaryotes. And those two parts are the nucleus um, and then everything else, the cytoplasm, organelles, and cell membrane. So the division of the nucleus and the chromosomes, that's called mitosis. And then the division of everything else, all the cytoplasm and organelles and cell membrane, that's cytokinesis. So we have the two parts of the cell equally divided are, are the nucleus and then all the organelles, and that's mitosis and cytokinesis. When the cell is just going about its regular business and doing cell life, it's in what we call interphase. Now interphase, uh, just regular cell life, and then if a cell decides to replicate, it will go through cell division, mitosis, and cytokinesis. To keep in mind that a cell can just stay in interphase um, for the rest of its days and just kind of die there. But assuming that a cell is going to go through cell division, since this is a chapter on cell division, we'll look at all these phases. So interphase can be broken down into three parts, the G1, S, and G2 phases. The G1 phase is the first growth phase, growth one. The cell is just getting bigger. It's increasing in size. Its cytoplasm is getting bigger. It's building up energy stores um, and extra, maybe extra enzymes and some vesicles full of things as it goes through the growth one phase. Many cells, in fact, most cells in your body will stop at the end of the G1 phase and enter what's called the G0 phase and they'll just live out the rest of their lives there and die. Some cells though will go past the G1 phase and decide to replicate at which point they enter the S phase. S standing for synthesis. Here DNA is copied. DNA synthesis. We have the copying of all the DNA inside of that cell. After the S phase comes the G2 phase, which is a second phase of growth. It's the second growth phase. We have growth, and it says in this chart, growth in preparation for cell division. Not only is this cell dividing or copying its DNA, it's starting to pack that DNA up um, and get ready to, to divide. It's also, since we need to split all the organelles as well, sorting out all the different organelles inside, getting its cytoskeleton restructured. Okay, so after the G1S and G2 phases, the cell will enter mitosis. Now mitosis, you can see, takes a relatively short time, but there's a lot of action going on here as far as the chromosomes are concerned. So mitosis, this is again the division of the nucleus as part of cell division in the genetic material inside. The phases of mitosis are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, which happens at the same time as cytokinesis. So during prophase, many things are happening in prophase, very busy phase. We have the chromosomes forming, so the DNA is being packed. It's going from chromatin to chromosomes. These are going to be chromosomes with centromeres, by the way. So we have the DNA being packed up. The nuclear membrane starts to fall apart. The centrioles, part of the cytoskeleton, are going to define the poles of the cell. Um, are starting to form and the organelles are being sorted out. All this in prophase. What makes prophase distinguishable with a microscope is you start to see the chromosomes form and the nuclear envelope fall apart. Second phase of mitosis is metaphase. Easily recognizable because all the chromosomes are lined up in the center of the cell. So if you're looking at the microscope you see the chromosomes lined up in the middle, you're in metaphase. You can see here this is a fish cell in metaphase. At the same time that the chromosomes are lined up, the reason they are lined up is because the centrioles or the centrosomes are on opposite poles of the cell and we have all the cytoskeleton pieces called spindle fibers. There's kinetochore fibers and there are polar fibers. Polar fibers go from one pole to the other pole all the way across the cell. Kinetochore fibers go from centrosome, one pole, to centromere, just the chromosomes in the middle. So we have Polar fibers going from centrosome to centrosome, and we have kinetochore fibers going from centrosome to centromere. Um, those combined are called the spindle fibers, and that's how the chromosomes are lined up in the middle. Lots of action going on there, easily recognizable under a microscope. In anaphase, the chromosomes are going to split and go to opposite ends of the cell. In this situation, we have the centromere splitting and being pulled. What was one chromosome with two, cent with two chromatids connected by a centromere has now become two chromosomes 
and those chromosomes are going to opposite poles. These chromosomes are being pulled by the kinetochore fibers. At the same time, you can see the cell is elongating because the polar fibers are pushing. So you have a pushing of polar fibers and a pulling of kinetochore fibers, and the result is that these chromosomes are being pulled to opposite ends of the cell. Easily distinguishable under a light microscope as you see these chromosomes going to either side and being separated in the cell. Then the last phase of mitosis is telophase, where these chromosomes having reached the centrosome or reached their own pole of the cell, um, the chromosomes start to unpack a little bit, the nuclear envelope reforms, and we're basically done moving the chromosomes and moving the DNA. And that's telophase. Okay, one more time quickly, just in summary of the stages of mitosis. First, um, before we get to mitosis, this cell here, and in these cells, the cytoskeleton has been dyed with a green dye, and then the DNA has been um, stained with a blue dye. So the cytoskeleton is in green, and the DNA is in blue. And this cell here, we can see, is an interface. There are no chromosomes, it's just a nucleus with chromatin, and the cytoskeleton's all over the place. Here we're in later interphase. This is probably like the G2 phase of interphase, where you can see the cytoskeleton has started to realign itself, and there's some clear sorting going on inside of that nucleus. Here, this cell is the first cell that's in, in mitosis. This is prophase. <clears throat> the chromosomes are being packed up, and are the, the, chrom the, the DNA is being packed up into chromosomes. We're starting to get these centrosomes, um, chunks of cytoskeleton forming on either pole. Here, the chromosomes are unlined up in the middle. This is metaphase um, with all of our polar fibers, both our kinetochore and our um, polar fibers there for spindle. And then this cell here is an anaphase. The chromosomes being pulled towards opposite ends. This is late anaphase, our um, early telophase. The chromosomes have kind of hit their end there. And these cells are definitely in late telophase at this point. Um, so the stages of mitosis reviewed again in color. Okay, here in this telophase um, part here, we can see this is actually telophase and cytokinesis happening at the same time. In this picture, we can see the cytoskeleton is tightly pinched, and these really these cells have become two separate cytoskeletons inside. Uh, a more uh, different way of looking at this uh, with cytokinesis. Here, looking at the splitting of the rest of the cell, the cytoplasm, organelles, and cell membrane. In an animal cell, you get a pinching in of the cell membrane, which is called a cleavage furrow. Um, here's an electron microscope look at that, and it's an artistic rendering. As the cell pinches in together, the cleavage furrow, and eventually the two ends of this uh, furrow will meet in the middle, and you get two new cells. So that's cytokinesis. Obviously, all of the organelles would have been sorted, um, half going to each side, before the cleavage furrow is pinched in. Plant cells, since they have a cell wall, um, they need to add something extra to this. Yes, there's some membranes will pinch in, but they also have to grow a new cell wall between the two new cells. And this new forming cell wall is called a cell plate, and it starts in the middle um, and then form, grows to either end. Um, it would be if this was a plant cell, which is not, it would form here in the middle and then grow outward. Um, toward the new cells, and then it just fuses into the other. So animal cells have a cleavage furrow, cell membrane pinching in, whereas plant cells have a cell plate that forms and then grows into a new cell wall between the two new cells. So this whole process of mitosis um, and interphase in the cell cycle is tightly controlled and regulated. Um, as we discussed earlier in the year, uh, one of the ultimate determiners of um, cell function is its size. And as a cell um, is first created, it's about 500 to 1,000 feptoliters, which is really, really small. And then it grows over time, this G1 phase. And as cells grow, they reach a size where like, wait, I need to decide. I am so big right now that I either need to divide and split into two new cells, go through mitosis, or I need to stop growing right here. Right? That idea of control over division depends on the cell knowing how big it is. Now, these points in the cell's life, when it's looking at how big am I, what do I want to do, these are called checkpoints. So there are three primary checkpoints inside of a, the cell cycle. The first one, it was, was just described, is the G1 checkpoint. The cell, the newly formed cell, has been growing and storing energy, and it reaches this checkpoint and decides, 
Um, am I big enough to divide? Do I want to divide? Do I have the energy resources to divide? Um, and many cells will stop here at the G1 checkpoint and just leave the cell cycle and spend forever at this point, at which that's called the G0 phase. And they just stay there and interface their whole life. But having, if a cell decides it's at the G1 checkpoint, it knows it's big enough, it's got the energy that it needs, um, and it decides I'm going to go through mitosis, it will go through the S phase and the G2 phase and arrive at the G2 checkpoint. This is the second checkpoint, at which point the cell is looking to see, did I copy my DNA correctly? Have I gotten all of my um, organelles and cell parts sorted to the places they need to be so I can go through cytokinesis? Um, so it's a DNA synthesis checkpoint. Have I copied all of my DNA? Um, no mistakes inside there. My organelles are ready. Am I good to go? Because once a cell gets past this G2 checkpoint, um, it, it has to, it's going to pack up its DNA. There's no more um, checking to see what's going on um, and responding to that. It's, it's going to go, right? It's all in. By the way, if there's a problem here at this G2 checkpoint, and the cell has gotten this far, it's already copied its DNA and prepared to divide. If there's a problem, that cell will just self-destruct. It's something that's called apoptosis. Um, it's in this cartoon here, it says, all violators must fix their mistakes or face apoptosis. Apoptosis is programmed cell death. If a cell gets to the end of this G2 checkpoint and realizes it's not ready, its DNA hasn't been copied right, or its organelles aren't there, or it doesn't have enough energy, it will self-destruct and, and die. But uh, if it's past that G2 checkpoint, it will quickly go through mitosis. At the end of mitosis, when the DNA has been moved to either side, there's a quick check where all of the, the cytoskeleton goes, did I get all of my chromosomes inside of there? Um, if the cytoskeleton is like confirmed and it's good, then the cell will continue through cytokinesis and have a cleavage for our cell plate. If not, the cell just dies. It doesn't continue on with, um, with splitting and becoming two new cells. But this process, again, these two checkpoints, the cell at these points is pretty much on autopilot. Uh, it's, it's either going to succeed or it's going to die. Here at the G1 checkpoint, the cell can decide, do I want to stop and continue living or do I want to continue on? Right? So there's three primary checkpoints. If at any point um, these checkpoints are something wrong with them, the cell could face um, obvious problems, including death. An uh, interesting thing that happens with cancer is defined as the uncontrolled growth and reproduction of cells. Um, the cells keep on going through the cell cycle again and again and again and again. Um, they're always getting to the checkpoints and the lights are always green. It keeps on going and going and going. The primary problem with most cancers isn't with the mitosis checkpoint or the G2 checkpoint. The problem is here at the G1 checkpoint. The cell grows and instead of stopping and staying in interface, it decides to keep on going through and dividing. So this G1 checkpoint um, is a primary focus of much cancer research. How could you get cells to stop here if for some reason they're ignoring this checkpoint and just speeding right through and going through mitosis and cytokinesis repeatedly? Okay, so that was a whirlwind tour of cell division. I know it was really fast. Um, if you wanted to go through in a different way, there's a website here. You can copy the address right here. It does require flash, so if that's a problem, sorry. But what it does is it takes mitosis and meiosis, which we'll do later, um, and it just kind of compares them side by side and has a description of what's going on. So here we have a cell with its chromosomes and its nucleus. Go to the next phase. What's happening? Centrioles starting to form, right? And then we get chromosomes starting to form as we enter prophase. And then we get the, between prophase and metaphase, uh, kind of halfway as we're starting to dissolve the nuclear membrane. And then metaphase, the chromosomes line up in the center. And then we get to anaphase, as chromosomes being pulled apart, right, into telophase, nuclear membrane reforming, and then cytokinesis in two new cells. So this kind of graphic, and you can go back and forth and just look at it all over, and it has nice descriptions inside of what's happening. Good graphic provided by NOVA, if that's if interesting to you.